Hello and welcome back. In this video, we will see the post hoc tests. And here we will see more precisely the Monferroni post hoc test. Post hoc tests are an integral part of ANOVA. So as you know, and based on our previously uploaded video, ANOVA it look at differences between the means of three or more independent groups. So we're having, just to remind you, the null hypothesis, which states that the groups, they are having equal mean. And the alternative hypothesis states that one of these groups, it's having a different mean. So if you want, you can go and check uh, the previously uploaded video and how we made the test and the results. So last time we reached the result where we're having the p-value, it's 0 0.02. It means it's less than 0 0.05. So we know that we have to reject the null hypothesis and there is one of these groups that it's having a different mean. So now with the post hoc tests, we will know which group it's different. So this is why we will use the post hoc tests. And post hoc in Latin means after this, it's used to analyze the results of your data. However, Every time you use a t-test, there is a chance that you will make a type one error. This error, usually it's alpha, for example, 5%. So by running two t-tests on the same data, you will increase your chance of making a mistake to 10%. And here, because we were comparing between uh, three uh, different groups, so we will make three t-tests, okay? So here we will increase our chance to make the type one error to 15%. So now you will be asking, what's a type one error? As you can see here, a type one error, okay, means when your statistical analysis, when your test, statistical test, you reject the null hypothesis. However, in reality, it's true and it shouldn't be rejected. So this is where we're having a type one error. So first, what we will do, we will do the t-test. So the t-test, as you know, it's a comparison between two groups. It's a comparison of means between two, two groups. So what we will do, we will go to function here and we click on t.test. And this function, it will return the p-value of the t-test. So first we have to compare between online and between the traditional or conventional classroom grades. Okay, and here you're having the tails. Here uh, you have whether it's one tailed or two tailed. So here I'm interested to know only if there is any difference. So this is why I will choose two and not one because it's a two tailed distribution. And in the type, you're having here three types whether it's pair t-test, whether two sample equal variance or two sample unequal variance. Here I'll assume that my data is having equal variance. So this is why I will put two as well. So as you can see here, it returned the p-value for the comparison between online and classroom. And I will do the same for classroom and combination. So it's t.test. And here I have to choose the data. So we're having classroom. Okay, and also we're having the online, the combination here, okay. And then I have two because it's two tailed and also comma two because it's equal variance. Also it will return the p-value. And here I have to compare between combination and online. So I put equal t dot test. Okay, and also I will have to choose combination, comma, the online grades, comma, I have to put two because it's two tailed, and then two because it, I'm assuming it's equal variance. So now we will see what is Bonferroni post hoc. By running uh, 
as we said, 2T test or 3T test in our case. So we are increasing our chance of making this type 1 error. So the Benferroni correction is a multiple comparison correction used when several statistical tests are being performed simultaneously. And here we're having three tests that they are being performed simultaneously. So the Benferroni correction will reduce alpha by simply dividing it by the number of tests you are doing. So in order to reduce this type 1 error, what I have to do, I have to reduce this alpha. And Bonferroni correction states that I have to divide the already existing alpha that we're having here, 0.05 usually, and I have to divide this 0.05 by the number of tests. So here we're having three tests. So I have to divide it by three. So here, instead of comparing the p-value to 0.05, what I have to do, I have to compare it to uh, 0.070. So here, 0.6, it's greater than 0.017. It means I failed to reject the null hypothesis, which states that the online grades, it's the same as classroom. The same here, we're having 0.021. It's greater than 0.017. Also, I failed to reject the null hypothesis. It means there is no difference between classroom and combination. However, we're having the third one, combination and online. As you can see, 0.013, it's less than 0.017. And this is why I reject the null hypothesis. So I say that there is a difference between combination and online. Uh, the ordinary Benferroni method is sometimes viewed as uh, too conservative. So uh, we are having the home Benferroni post hoc test, which is less strict correction for multiple comparisons. So uh, first, in order to do the uh, home Benferroni, what we have to do, we have to rank the p-value. So uh, we will rank it based on an ascending, uh, ascending um, order. So here you're having 0.013. It's the uh, smallest uh, p-value that you're having or the lowest p-value that we're having. So this is why we rank it as one. Then the second lowest we're having 0.021. So we rank it as two. And the highest in uh, this test, it's the p-value between online and classroom. So the rank, it's three. So now the formula to calculate uh, the home Bonferroni, it's alpha, so I have to do alpha, which is 0 0.05. And I have to divide it by n, and it means the number of tests, which is here three, minus the rank, okay? Uh, plus one, okay? So uh, here, as you can see, uh, instead of having 0 0.017, we're having 0 0.05. So we will compare this one to 0 0.05 and not to 0 0.017. And also I'll drag it here. It means if you want this home Benferroni, it balances between the type one error and the type two error. Because when I'm decreasing the alpha, or when I'm lowering the alpha, that's true that I'm decreasing the type one error. However, I'm increasing the type two error, which is to uh, accept the null hypothesis when in reality, it should be rejected. So this home Benferroni, it makes the balance between the two. So as you can see here, uh, 0 0.6, it's greater than 0 0.05, so I fail to reject the null hypothesis. It means there is no difference between online and classroom. Uh, however, here, 0 0.021, it's less than 0 0.025. This is why I have to reject the null hypothesis, and I have to say that there is a significant difference between classroom and combination, and the same here because it didn't change there is a statistically significant difference between online and combination. So you can see from the holm benferroni correction that combination, uh, it's different 
than both online and, and classroom, which they are the same. Uh, thank you for watching uh, this video. I hope uh, it's useful. I will make available a report about the type 1 and type 2 error like this. You can go and uh, read it.